Welcome back. Now we're going through the 11th assignment of block one of the Evolve Artist Program. This is an apple on a stand with a ball and we are still in black and white, of course, doing our usual process. I've already transferred the line art by copying the black and white image that we were given. I mean, it wasn't really a black and white image. It was a line art. And then we used the graphite, graph, graphite paper to transfer everything onto the canvas. And then we're starting, of course, with our usual laying down the base colors. So the extreme shadow, moderate shadow, moderate light, and extreme light, starting from dark to light. That's the process, because Kevin wants to drill into us this standard way of doing things. We have to form good habits from the beginning. So it, we always start with the darkest shadow value first. And um, one thing that I really like about the Evolve pro program, and I think I've said this a lot, but I love the way it's so systematic. It's almost a little bit like Suzuki method for art, I think. Although I suppose I'd have to wait a few years until I'm more experienced in art and I can look back on this with, you know, the eyes of a wiser and more experienced artist before I can say whether or not that metaphor is particularly apt. But from where I stand currently, it really does seem like this is an actual proven stepwise method for picking up the necessary art skills that you need for oil painting. And not just oil painting, but in the future, in the rest of the Evolve program, you're going to learn other aspects of art as well. I'm saying this with the benefit of some retrospection, of course, because I actually did this painting months before I'm um, putting up this video. So part of this is going back and looking at what I did then and um, learning from learning from the past. Because one thing that I have found with learning, not just art, but with anything, is that the first time you encounter new information, you can learn a lot, especially if it's pre presented in a very um, beginner-friendly manner, uh, or it's designed for students, which Kevin is a great pedagogue, educator, I guess. He's really good at designing this course so that it works for everyone, especially someone like me, who's completely a beginner to oil painting. But um, what I was saying is, it's really helpful to go back and look at the old lessons that you learned. Because some things, you think you understand it, but then after you've taken some time and gotten a little bit beyond those so-called, quote, basic lessons, and you come back and review the basics, you realize, oh, there's more here than I knew. Like, I was recently talking to somebody who's a, an expert chemist, and he has a doctorate in chemistry. But he was saying how basically everything you need to know about chemistry is taught in gen chem, which is like first year, freshman year chemistry. If you, have, if you take first year chemistry class, all of the things, all of the concepts that you really need to know are in that one class. And I was like, how is that possible? And he's like, no, it really is. Like you, the teacher or the textbook, if they, um, if they do a good job, they actually cover everything that you need to know about chemistry in that first class. It's just that as beginning students, a lot of people don't realize it because they don't dive deeply into it. But if you were a particularly self-motivated student or more, what's the word, more astute perhaps, you would notice some things. Like when you're reading the textbook, it'll maybe offhandedly mention a concept and you'll realize, hmm, I don't really understand that concept. And if you were yourself to dig more into it, you would you'd be able to teach yourself everything you really need to know about chemistry. Basically, all of the major concepts that you need to know are in the beginning. It's kind of like there's that poem, I think it's a poem, um, that was a rather famous online for a few years a few years ago and it was like everything i needed to know about life i learned in kindergarten or something like that basically the idea is that a lot of the the skills or the abilities the knowledge that makes a professional really good at what he does or she does is already there in the beginning it's kind of like the oak tree is there within the seed. Even though the seed is tiny and it doesn't look anything like an oak tree, the potential for the oak tree is already there. Everything that the oak tree needs to be an oak tree is already there within the seed. And it's like that with a lot of um, other, other topics as well, educational topics. And I think this is, this is something that you 
learn when you go through and learn a lot of different things. And Kevin often likes to emphasize that everything in art is, I think it's three things, it's value, edges, and color. And we haven't even gotten to color yet. We're still in black and white, so we're just focusing on value and edges. And if you want, and within those two topics, value and edges, there's a lot that you can learn. Like we learn about edges, there's basically two kinds. There's the straight, um, sharp edge, and then there's the gradient. And gradients, the gradients are such, uh, you can go so deep into them in terms of the theoretical knowledge and also the practical application. I mean, I, to this day, still struggle a bit with doing gradients properly, which is to be expected because like I said, I'm a beginner. When I first started the Evolve program, I really had, I literally had never touched oil paints before, ever in my life. I played around with acrylics, I played around with digital art, I have played with oil pastels a little bit, but zero when it comes to oil painting. Although, of course, there are definitely concepts within, in art that are applicable to any medium. But um, I'm, I'm, I wasn't just a beginner to oil painting. I was really kind of a beginner to art as well. I like you know read a few books, kind of dabbled a little bit here and there. But I wasn't one of those people who really um, did a lot of drawing on my own either. Anyways, okay. So at this part of the uh, painting process, I think I let it dry for a day, and then I realized that something wasn't quite right, and so I redid the um, the base shadow and lights. See, I'm redoing the apple and going to redo the gradient there. I don't know if that's okay, <laughs> but I just, I let the painting dry and then I was like, I don't like the way this looks. I'm going to redo it. So I did. Um, anyways, back to what I was saying. So it's the same thing with music. For example, there's this famous violinist named Heifetz and he practiced scales, which are just like do, re, mi, fa, so two hours a day, I think it was till like right before he died. He was doing it all his life, in other words. So you never get past the basics. It's just that as you get better, you are more versatile with the basics. Oh, I think I know what I, why I did this. It's because I didn't really like the way that I did the buffer. Um, also, the ball was really messed up. One thing that I learned is that with um, gradients is that the buffer doesn't have to be a thin line. I keep missing that. Even though I know it, it takes a while for these lessons to sink in. It's kind of like if you've ever read the book, the inner game of tennis, um, the, the author talks about how when he's teaching his students, he found out that giving them too many words isn't really helpful. When he tells them, oh, you, you should raise your arm here and you should step forward at this point, and they're all thinking about that and they don't get it. And for me, one thing that I thought I got, but I didn't really get, is that the buffer isn't a thin line. I mean, the teachers kept telling me, you can make it thicker. You can also change the shape of the buffer. It doesn't have to be like rectangular. It can, it can be curved. It can be lots of different shapes. I, I still, <laughs> took me a while to really get that. I think I'm still learning it, actually. I'm still figuring out how to do that in real life and remind myself to do that when I'm in, in the middle of painting. That's another thing, too, is that sometimes learning, it's not just understanding once. It's doing it over and over again, practicing it until the concept becomes a part of you so that it, it's like a habit. Like you you don't have to think, okay, remember when you're doing the buffers, you have to do X, Y, Z, and instead you just do it. So that's part of the practice um, process. And that's why, another reason why I like the way that this curriculum is structured is because we have the opportunity to practice these new skills that we're learning with multiple paintings. We're, we're not taught one massive new, or multiple skills. Sometimes people will throw, some teachers who don't fully know how to design curriculum, they'll sometimes throw too many things at you at one at one time. And then you're like, wait, I have to do X and Y and Z and A and B and C. Um, but what I like about the way Kevin designed his course is he starts with, okay, we're just going to work on straight edges. And then we're going to just work on simple gradients. And then we're going to work on slightly more complicated gradients. And then we're going to so on and so forth. And then eventually we're going to do highlights and reflections and we literally do 20 paintings in black and white. We don't even talk about color because color has, it's even more moving parts. It's even more complicated. Okay, so now here's me touching up some of the last things. This is where we're doing highlights and reflections. So you see how when the apple is sitting on top of the stand, because the stand is a lighter color, the light sometimes bounces off the stand a little bit and it hits the apple in the shadowy part. And so that, that shade is not as dark as it's supposed to be. 
Um, so there's a little bit of a highlight there. And then with this ball down here, there's the shadow is a little bit darker where it leans against the stand or whatever that thing is. And the shadow that it casts also is a little bit darker in certain areas as well. And that's what, that's where we do the thing, the process, which is called shadows, uh, highlights and reflections. Although I guess it's also shadowing a little bit. And there's a bit of a lip to that stand. So I put that in there. The only regret I have is that this apple looks like it has a bit of a welt on it. But otherwise, that was it. That is assignment 11. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video.